they found me. Come to me. Ow! Ah, I'm stuck on a ridge. You'll never learn. Honeycomb. Bag it with fish pate. Yellow dye. I got some weapon dies. I mean, there. Drop that. That's a nice one. Oh yeah. Wanna see bright yellow. Check out white. Okie dokie. Three more question marks. First, let's get out of the water and meditate. And which characters? What are we at? I got four points. Drawn magic unique and witcher swords and when drawn, magic unique and witcher swords increase sign damage dealt by 50% of their own damage dealt. Each fatal blow dealt by a sword dismembers the enemy or activates a finisher. Each blow dealt by a weapon in melee combat increases attack power by 5% until combat ends. Bonus is lost if you take damage.
Okay. Moving on. Oh, that's a clip. Yep. Place of power should draw from it. Two more. We yep. Bet it's that little hut over there. No, oh, that's a boat. It's right by the boat. Fine, I'm fine, I'll swim. Wanted to follow the coastline, but no, Gale, that's a slide. Lads, some night errants wandering our turf. Bad enough, Quail set his Nilfgaardian boyfriends after us. Now we've got this idiot to deal with. But don't get too elaborate about it. No raping or impaling or eye gouging or whatnot. Cut off his head and get out. Grey Bill Pellegrin. Oh, that's exploding. By my throat, it is the Witcher who saved us from war. Alrighty then. Last question mark. That is a clip. Still a cliff. That is a tree. Damn it. just in case. And I'll save the game. So why not?
Finally, I have found a solution. For the Imperial Dramatic Academy ex examinations, I shall reenact re Elsa de Logro's most famous role, her final performance, the one where she died on stage. The most perfect actoral, actorly, actorly act that has ever been acted. Then we will be forced to advance. Then they will be forced to advance me. This role is too difficult. My teacher's still not pleased. Perhaps I simply lack the talent. It's hard to measure up to Elsa's legend. Yes, now I know what I am missing. I must feel the role. Recreate the entire evening at the amphitheater. With candles, wine, the works. Just like Elsa once did. The aura of that place might provide the help I need. They say Elsa spent nearly her entire life there. Folk claim the amphitheater is haunted, and that is why no more plays are performed there. Apparently, everyone who has tried to act out Elsa's scene on that amphitheater stage has died in mysterious circumstances. Old wives' tales. Even, it is, even if it is haunted, I believe Elsa's spirit will give me its blessing. Tonight, I set out. I prepared candles and acquired two bottles of the very same wine Elsa drank right before her death. I will rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. Until at last I feel, I believe, indeed, I am Elsa. The day now dies. It collapses into itself, as does my soul. Darkness like a stifling vapor shall soon swallow me. No, now I am at last ready to renew the memory of ghosts in my heart. I shall light the candles. Let the first flicker for the lad, a mere child who was smitten and perished on the field of battle at high noon without a murmur. Let now the second flicker for he who wishes to fetch me a jewel from the bottom of the well, and never surface to see the light of this world again. Let the third flicker for the husband, handsome as a statue, cold as a stone, who left me alone in darkness departed. Anonymously he died, in the woods he perished. Let the fourth flicker for he who loved so beautifully, so heatedly delighted, and in this fire was consumed. Let the fifth flicker for you, my beloved, my faithful companion, my hapless husband, racked by disease. You lie in the earth now shallowly of all. All candles now flicker, so lovely, so white. Men, boys, husbands, mine all. I love you to the last. Now behold the wine. I drink it, and with it sanctify your memory. I enacted the marked scene, looks like, and expired. Or did something kill her? Wonder what'll happen if I reenact the scene. Need to backtrack along her prints, then light the candles in the same order she did. Yeah. Wrong. drink. I'm guessing it's a quest item. Oh 
my gosh. I can see that. I know. Banshees. Yeah, Banshees howl and shriek, and if you hear their cry, you can know you'll join the ranks of the dead that night. Old gossips claim Banshees are the spirits of women stuck between life and death due to traumatic experiences. Their wails and howls are considered ill omens of imminent, inevitable death, though they are said not to attack the living themselves. Most often they appear in the form of a pale, tear-streaked woman with shriveled faces and wrinkled corpse-like bodies. Spectre oil. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Heal. Yeah. And it's over here at this entrance, probably. Okay, never mind then. Guess I found some treasure. Hidden copper. No, that, that it get, I got a necklace with a key shape hole or something. From the wraith. Yeah, I looted the wraith already. Yes, the wraith was the actress. Therefore, it would be where the actress would have put the cup. This is not backstage. This is a little cubby hole. Yeah. The yeah, absolutely. 16th day of the month of Lamna, of Lamas, year 1178. We've only a few days left before the premiere. They say even Duke Roger and his favorite, Countess de Stadecher, would will be in attendance. This role, this will be my magnum opus. I feel no stage fright or nervousness about my upcoming performance, but I'm terrified by her. Annika. She turns Chardonnay red with jealousy as soon as we step on stage together. Is it my fault that the provincial actress, an elf to boot, is not as talented as I? Does she truly expect... Her hatred is near palpable. I'm terrified. I spoke to the director about this, but I think he did not take me seriously. He's too absorbed in the premiere, which is approaching rapidly. Annika has been rooting around my things. She read this journal. I caught her red-handed, sitting in my room. I'm horrified by how I reacted. 
I exploded, naturally. Screamed at her, at first, but a single look from her froze that scream in my throat with fear. I must take all my most valuable possessions and hide them in the amphitheater. I shall now wear the key to my chest on my person at all times, hanging from this necklace the jeweler made for me. It gets worse and worse. I fear she wishes to kill me. I feel an itch in my back. Pressing... Press... Pressing... Pressing for her dagger? Or perhaps this itch is... Or perhaps this itch in my throat. Is that her as well? She'll be poisoned then? Very theatrical of her, either way. Gods, I swear. If that despicable creature does anything to hurt me, I shall turn this amphitheater into an earthly hellscape. Right then. There's the cave den. Oh, it's over there. Okay. I thought it was over here for some reason. Fine then. Up we go. Lab. Let's go get some manticore armor. Leave me alone, drowners. They just come back. They just come back. They just come Did back. I stutter? They never stop. Peacock. Merkwood.
No, dear. Place that there, my lord. Haven't I been here already? Show me what you got. Where are you going? Fine. The cave Merton mentioned. Need to look around. Slips of paper all over. Prayer on each one. Maybe Merton left one too. Remember to seek moderation in all things, in drink and victuals and the pleasures of the flesh. For whosoever shall abuse these pleasures shall awake the next morn in great pain, with a pounding head and a wilted member. Do not unto thy neighbor what thou thyself de deemest unpleasant, unless thy neighbor hath done thee thoroughly wrong and rife with vileness for his deeds. Thou shalt always speak the truth, unless the truth is not well served by being spoken, in which case thou shalt lie. Verily I say unto you, give alms to the poor, yet deposit not a whole watermelon upon a beggar's lap, but merely half, lest the beggar's joy strike him with a, a pop. Plexi. Please bless Mummy with good health, great Libyota. Make her well and make her never get so awful pissed again. Antoinette. O oh, great Libyota, make my fields yield bounties and save them from floods and drought. But only my fields, mind you. My neighbor has had enough luck of late. Gaston. Let me be beautiful, shapely, alluring, and always youthful, and may lice gnaw on that strumpet Mary Maria's fat hiney. Babette. Already asked Mel Melitele, I've been to the druids and nothing, so maybe you, great Lebiota, will hear my prayer. I want to be old, ugly, and fat, for I'm sick and tired of staring at all these fair folk. They're as dull as ditch water. I, at least, aspire to be interesting. Bless me with strength, that I may never falter. Bless me with grace, that I may never doubt. Bless me with fortitude of spirit, that I may leave behind the old and embrace the new with courage. I, Murden, a member of the Guild of Witchers named after the Manticore, begin this day my pilgrimage. Here, in the very cave where, for three and twenty days and three and twenty nights, Lebiota fasted and meditated. I vowed to atone for my sins, to walk the path of redemption, rid myself of all that ties me to my old life, so that I may stand proudly among the disciples of the highest and proclaim myself a new man. I shall thus now journey to the temple of Lebiota to meet with the great beggar, a sage who has pondered the pearls of Lebiota more than any else in this sad veil of tears. I shall listen to his counsel and follow his guidance on my road to absolution. There we are. Burton wrote a prayer on the back of the diagram. 
Seems he left the prison, came here, then went on to the temple. And may Jean-Luc be struck down and his bowels devoured by cholera, for he is a lecher and harlot brood like few others. Bastion. Lebiota, blessed be thy name. Please let my son Julian reach Covir safely. Let him find a little lady at last, one well born and with ample tracts of land. Pascal. Go to the temple. Temple is way up there. Oh, we are going to fast travel then. Stop running. It's a panther. Cat. 